Hey everybody, so today we are going to be putting a fun twist on reviewing data science skills. Now I'm only going over three skills in this video and I can certainly do more videos in this format if you like it. So please make sure you like this video or comment down below if this is enjoyable for you. Now the twist is going to be two of these skills are things that I think are not emphasized enough in the data science skill set. And we're going to go over why these might be important for you to add to your skill tree of data science. The other one we're gonna go over is a myth. And this is a common myth either in the data science community itself or in the larger community of people working with data scientists. And this is something that I wanna emphasize here because you need to watch out for these myths because they can be dangerous or they can cause you a lot of trouble if you're not really aware of them or if you're not watching for them. And as an added benefit of this game show like kind of format, if you guess which of these three things are a myth and you leave it as a comment down below, I will put your name in for a drawing for a $25 Starbucks gift card. So if this sounds interesting to you, let's get started. Technical skill is not as important to being a standout data scientist as these other three skill sets. And that is creativity, curiosity, and empathy. Now in practice, these are incredibly important because they add that extra sparkle to your day-to-day -day skills. So you can be the best coder on the planet, but if you don't know how to be creative, right? Sometimes we don't all have the best solution or the best resources at hand. Sometimes you have to get a little scrappy and a little uh, inventive in your ways of, of solving those problems. That is a really important skill set. And going hand in hand with that is curiosity. If you don't find things curious and go, huh, wonder how that works, or oh, wonder why that is, then you're not going to have as many tools in your toolbox as somebody that is curious because you are constantly learning about the world and about things that may not on the surface have anything to do with your day-to-day -day work but eventually they might actually come in handy. And that empathy, that's really important because you have to really empathize with your end user or with your product owner. You have to be willing to ask, oh, that's interesting. Why is that your perspective on things? You have to have empathy and interest in what the other person's perspective is. How people made decisions and how they solved problems in their research and their development more so than the actual results of that research and this is important because again it's adding tools to your toolbox but it's also looking at how people outside of your organization and your industry even are solving for things. And a lot of it can be used at your organization even if it's from a different industry. So I have a link down below for a video that I just watched recently that I found incredibly helpful in understanding how the video game industry are solving for problems and if you're doing anything with an end user, these might be problem solving techniques that you might wanna consider as well. And so this is something that I commonly do. I spend at least four hours, yes, you heard me right, four hours ingesting this kind of information on a daily basis. And you might think, wow, that's a lot of time, Ashley. Well, I, I make time in the morning and in the evening to get some of this time in. Now, is it four hours every single day? No, but that's an average. And I learn so much from other people and ingesting in different mediums also is important here. Listening to podcasts, watching videos, reading articles, looking at blogs, all of those things are going to be helpful for you in this application of skills and problem solving. With data science, you can do a lot with very little. And so this means that you are scrappy. You understand how to do things that others probably don't understand. You probably have some special knowledge that others probably wish they had. And it also allows you to be able to make a lot of connections at a very deep level in a lot of different systems, a lot of different types of databases with very little effort. And by tying those things together, 
you can get a lot of really actionable results in very little time. This is something that makes data scientists very unique and very special. And this is something that we see all the time in great representations in TV and movie media as well, where it's really showcasing how those skills are very realistic and really valuable for most companies to bring on if they don't already have them. All right, so I am going to put up all three options here on the screen. So put the timestamp here and put your guess down below if one, two, or three is the myth. Is number three. So I did put a little cheeky uh, smile to the camera in there to help out. But this, I think, is a very common misconception. And not just from our business leaders and the people working with data scientists. I think this is often a myth that data scientists themselves, especially newly minted ones, sometimes have. And it's incredibly dangerous. And that's why I wanted to bring it up in this video. There is a lot of new data scientists that I've talked to where they don't want to accept a position unless it's, you know, the ones that they see on TV where they have cereal bars and sleep pods and, you know, six figures. Uh, that stuff doesn't always mean it's going to be the best job. And by watching what's in media, sometimes it gives the wrong impression that all tech jobs, especially in data science, are like that. The other thing that you might see is unrealistic expectations from our stakeholders. So. I've seen this often in medium to smaller companies that are hiring maybe their first data scientist. They don't really understand what that means. And so this person is usually on an island. And because a lot of the misconceptions are, well, you're a data scientist, you should be able to do all of these things. And you should be able to work with all of these data sets and figure it out. Throwing things over the fence and putting somebody on an island all by themselves is not only unfair to that individual, it's not going to give you the results that you expect. And there's also a danger in this, and that is oftentimes when you're not putting a data scientist into a healthy team that has realistic expectations, um, that data scientist isn't equipped to make ethical considerations or um, considerations and decisions on the data that they are using and is their accuracy measures for their models appropriate or are they you know doing the right analytics for the business need if they don't have a companion at least one person to help them through some of that it doesn't matter how much magic they do it's not going to give you good results and that just makes them not happy and it makes your business not happy and so this is why this myth i would actually say is one of the biggest reasons that data science is in the state that it's in and that might be kind of a silly way of, of putting it some of you in the audience might be like oh actually there's so many other reasons yeah i'm sure there there absolutely are there absolutely are other reasons but I think these unrealistic expectations on both sides is it's so dangerous because it's it's just defeating. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're defeating things before they even get started. And if you think something is magic, magic is something coming from nothing. And if you expect your data scientists to do that as well, then you're in for a surprise because something does not come from nothing. You have to be able to nurture your data scientists and you need to make sure that you are pairing them with at least one business or product partner so that they have guidelines and they have someone supporting them in, you know, those those ethical decisions, in those business decisions. You can't expect them to know all of those things as any of the hacker persona data scientists in the media look like. And that's, that's something that we all need to work on. So how do you combat this myth? There's a lot, there's probably so many things I could make another video on it, but some of the big ones are that we just all need to have better literacy on what data science actually means. So I will put a link down below uh, and I'll put a screenshot here on the screen of a great uh, skill tree that I have found for data science 
Most data scientists can't do all of these different things. So that's where you know where to support them. Data scientists also usually need a business partner and those business partners, especially stakeholders that are making decisions, need to be better educated on what is actually possible. And if you are the data scientist, this is something that you really need to make sure your stakeholders understand because if they think you're going to be that sexy computer hacker data scientist from TV or Tony Stark, you really need to make sure they understand what's actually possible and that data scientists are not as glamorous and as magical as they might perceive them to be at first glance. All right, so I hope this video has been helpful to you. I have put links down below if you want to find out more about any of the two secret skills and more about that myth down below. And if you found this video helpful, again, make sure that you leave a comment and you like it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.